Welcome back to Mastering Etsy Print On Demand, the completely free course that I've created to help you be your own product boss from anywhere in just pockets of time. Grounded by years of small business experience, expert testing because I never preach what I haven't practiced, and crafted to suit anyone no matter what part of the journey you're on, my goal is to show you the ropes, help you build out a strategic approach for print-on-demand success, and give you a results-based grip on driving sales using the Simply Pod framework that I've developed and that this entire free course is based off of. In case we haven't met yet, hey there, friend. My name is Mandy. I'm a busy Midwest boy mama, former HR director turned full-time handmade small business entrepreneur and builder of print-on-demand shops that all together have reached almost six figures in less than a year all while not having to touch a single product or ship anything out to a customer myself. I'm obsessed with sharing knowledge that simplifies the Etsy print-on-demand process so that truly anyone can feel empowered to start their own journey. In this final key module, we're going to be focusing on examples of all the different ways that you can drive traffic to your shop. We'll talk about email list integrations. We'll talk about some Pinterest basics. We'll talk about social media as well as Etsy marketing. And make sure you stick around to the end where I will be breaking down my Etsy ad secret. When we think about driving traffic, I typically think about them in three different categories, organic, social media, and paid. Let's take a look at each of those categories and what they mean. So again, we're looking at organic ways of driving traffic, social media, and paid. Within organic traffic, that is things like Etsy, SEO, and ranking, email list, and Pinterest. Within social media, that's things like TikTok, and Facebook, and Facebook groups, and Instagram. And then paid is, of course, Etsy ads and things like Facebook ads. Now, when we look at each of these individually. So with Etsy SEO and ranking, remember there were two key steps to this process. The first one was query matching, where Etsy search looks at the keywords that were typed in and matches them in key areas of your shop, like titles, tags, and description. If they match those results, they're eligible to rank in those search results. And then the second step is Etsy uses a variety of factors to then determine where your listings fall in the search results based on these various factors. And the ones that we focused on and looked at in module three were relevancy, listing quality score, shipping price, and customer and market experience. And as you'll recall, a big driver of this was optimizing and understanding that organic traffic comes from your efforts to optimize your listings and shop using the strategies we talked about. If all of this sounds foreign to you, that's okay. Just head on back to module three and walk through that process. Another organic traffic driver that sellers typically underutilize is an email list. And believe it or not, Etsy actually has a direct integration with a provider that you can use called Aweber. And the best part is it's completely free up to 500 subscribers. It's a great way to start collecting email addresses automatically from your Etsy orders. And you can also use it to engage subscribers in special sales, highlight new arrivals, things like that. And if you're not quite sure what to do with an email list just yet, that's okay. But I do recommend go ahead and turn it on. It's not going to hurt anything. It will simply give customers when they order, it'll add them to the list and it will automatically send a message to them asking them if they want to opt in. So even if you're not ready to send emails, turn it on and at least start collecting them so that you've got them available. Another wildly underutilized way to derive traffic is via Pinterest. And there's a very specific reason why it's not listed under the social media category. And that's because it's not social media. Pinterest, believe it or not, is a search engine. And much like Etsy, keywords are the secret to success with Pinterest. Other benefit of Pinterest is that content has a longer shelf life. So it's more of a long game, especially with regular pins, but it can really continue and live on in the Pinterest world 
because users are constantly searching and constantly repainting content. And that is what gives content and pins there a much longer shelf life than anything you'll find on TikTok or Instagram or even Facebook. There is no longer a direct integration with Etsy. There used to be years ago, but you can still pin with links and very soon idea pins you'll be able to directly link as well. Currently, you can do product pins using idea pins though. Pins out on Pinterest are also capable of becoming viral content, again, thanks to repinning mechanisms and how their search engine works. So let's walk through the anatomy of a perfect pin for the Pinterest search engine. Your first step is creating an aesthetic pin. And the easiest way to do that is by heading on over to Canva and using templates that are already there. You can simply add in your own picture, add some words to it, and that is all there is to it. Make sure it's vertical and easy to see the design, especially if you're using it to promote a product. And you can also repurpose the listing videos. Remember when we made those with the mockups in the design module? You can use those, convert them into vertical videos, and you can use those in idea pins because statistically, idea pins using short videos do really, really well on the platform. Remember to always use your best mockups so that you're really highlighting the design and standing out. And make sure that you're using your keywords in your caption, just like you would with Etsy. You wanna make sure that you're using terms related to the niche that you're in. Use those keywords to your advantage with Pinterest as well. And make sure you include a call to action on your pin, like shop now. Here is a quick example. I, I typically start by grabbing one of my mockups from the original ones that I made in Canva. I will save it and download it to my phone or whichever device that I'm using. Then from there, I will start a new project in Canva and I will search for Pinterest pin. And as I said, they already have templates available. So I'm going to select the Pinterest pin option and it's going to give me several different options that I can select from. I find one that works for me and I open it as a new project. Then I will edit the pin from there. I'll change out the photo, use the mockup that I created, and then I will simply type in that it is a Bernie's Mountain Dog Peril and there's a little shop now image that's already there. Then I will save that to my device. And then the next thing I do is I actually head over to my Etsy listing. And what I will do is I will click on the share button and then I will click share from there. And then what I can do is I can copy the link to this listing so that I have it when I head over to Pinterest. So once I've got that link copied, then I will open up Pinterest. And if I don't already have a board created for this type of niche, I will create one. So to do that, typically I'll get some keyword ideas simply by using the search bar that they've already got built in for this niche. So then I will create a board and I will name this one Bernie's Mountain Dog Aesthetic because that was one of the keywords that appeared in the search. I want to make sure that it is not secret, so I'll leave that alone and then I will simply hit create. Because the next thing I wanna do is create a pin. In this case, I want to create an idea pin because these are going to get the most traction. So I will create this as an idea pin. I'm going to grab the image that I created in Canva and then I'm going to click on the stickers button. Once I click on that, I will see an option for product. This will let me tag a product. Then I'm gonna hover over that use a link option and I'm going to paste it. Sometimes Etsy will pull in some of the other words that it had as part of that. I'll simply delete that and make sure I'm simply left with just the link to the listing. It's not an affiliate or sponsored link, but then it will give me images from that product page that I can select from. So I'll pick one that will be associated with the product sticker and then click create. That will then em embed a product tag as part of this pin. You'll see that it creates a little icon and then I usually drag that so that it's near that shop now button. So then when they click near that, it will grab and link to that product tag. 
and then I'm going to start filling out information about this pin. So in the title section, again, much like Etsy, this is where I want to use my good keywords as part of a keyword strategy, even within the title. So we'll call this one personalized Bernie's Mountain Dog Sweatshirt. Then I'm going to click on the notes section under add details, and I'm going to treat this as kind of like a mini description area. So again, I'm going to add in just a sentence or two describing it, adding in some good keywords so that it will become part of those searchable phrases in that search engine for Pinterest. The other thing I add in is this add link. This is a newer feature that's still being rolled out as part of idea pins. I use that same link to the product. I'm also going to make sure I select the board that I created specifically for these types of pins. And then I'm going to tag related topics. And so these are already pre-built in tags within Pinterest. And so it does take a little bit of searching to find a few. I try to grab at least two or three that are related to whatever the pin is as ideas that people might be searching for. So Bernie's Mountain Dogs, Dog Lovers, Birthday Gifts, things like that are all related. And so I'm adding those as additional tag topics. Once you've got a couple in there, you'll click done and then you are ready to publish your pin. Once it's published, you'll then be able to see that your product tag is in there. It shows up on your new board and when someone clicks on it, it takes them directly to your listing so that they can then either favorite it or purchase it directly. Pinterest is a wide, wide world to explore and there are plenty of nuances and so definitely worth checking it out if you're looking at ways to build more traffic for your shop. The other mechanism for driving traffic is of course with social media. Apps like TikTok are great for outreach and establishing a niche interest and attracting buyers. There's book talk, there's all sorts of very specific talks that are out there that can trend at any given time. So if that is something that interests you, definitely check those out as a way to reach a broader audience and potentially drive that traffic to your shop. Facebook and Instagram are great for nurturing a brand. Typically, you're not going to attract a wide audience that doesn't exist, but you can certainly nurture it if you are looking to build a brand with your shop. I do want to make sure you know to use caution with Facebook groups. This was a big thing a few years ago to start going into niche Facebook groups and posting about your products to try and gain interest from like mom groups or dog groups. I recommend avoiding this unless you were already part of those groups and actively engaged. Most Facebook groups nowadays do not allow you to post products because that is considered spamming and they can kick you out for that. So just be aware you can't just join a random group and start posting about your product. That will not go over well. But if you're part of a group and they do allow you to post, that is definitely an option to gain traffic. With social media, again, this is where samples can come in handy because you can actually show them with short videos. You can wear them and take a picture and mock-ups make great still photos for this as well. Social media is another place where you can promote email subscription if you decide to have that integrated with your Etsy shop. It's a great way to start collecting those emails and building a following so that you can continue to drive traffic in that way. Now, I will say that I personally don't build social media accounts for my print-on-demand shops, but they are certainly a great way to build a brand and drive traffic if that is what you would like to do with your shop. So if I'm not using social media, that means for me, I tend to work mostly within the marketing tools that Etsy is already providing. One of these is offsite ads. Etsy works with partners like Google and Yahoo and social media platforms and Buzzfeed and so many others to get listings promoted and out there to try and drive traffic back to the platform. For new shops, this is optional to be part of these offsite ads. If you get a sale from an offsite ad, 
Etsy will charge you a 15% fee on that sale. If you are a shop that builds to over 10K in revenue, it becomes required to be part of offsite ads. And they lower that fee to 12% fee on sales from those offsite ads. Now, remember, this will cut into your profit margin when you make sales on these. And if you get to the point where you don't have the ability to opt out of these right now, then you need to keep that in mind because your profit margin is going to be lower for those sales. But remember, this is a great way to have traffic coming into your shop and Etsy is doing all the work for you. Again, I highly, highly, highly recommend you need to be using an Etsy profit calculator to factor these types of fees and additional add-ons into your pricing strategy. You don't need a plan to cover for all of these all of the time, but if you use the calculator to at least understand how these offsite ads will impact your sales and your profit, it helps you be knowledgeable so that you're not surprised when they do happen. The other Etsy marketing that's available right there on the platform is sales and discounts. And these are a great option because they are automated. So you can set it up so that Etsy will automatically send thank you emails post purchase. This is a great way to attract return buyers with a coupon code. Same thing with abandoned cart. You can set it up so that Etsy sends these automatically when someone starts a cart, but don't check out. Again, it's a great way to capture sales. If someone leaves or exits their mobile app and forgets to come back, they can be incentivized by these coupon codes to actually complete that purchase. And similarly, you can set up an automatic message to go to someone who has a favorited an item but hasn't bought it yet. So again, a great way to incentivize a buyer to finish their purchase and complete that sale. And once you set these up, they're completely automated. And you can see this is actually a live snapshot from one of my shops of all the different emails that have been sent. Another hack that I like to use is daily sales. So you see that little green countdown bar on these listings? That's a sale that's set to end in less than 24 hours. And those pop up automatically within Etsy anytime you're running a sale and it drops below that 24 hour mark. I like to set these up to run most days. You can pick whichever days you want, but I like to set them up to run most days. And it creates a sense of urgency with your buyers, which brings us to my Etsy ad strategy. So here is the secret sauce to how I use ads in my own shop, especially in the beginning as a brand new shop. This is the exact process that I use to drive sales and grow faster. And it's probably not what you think. First, I want to make sure I am crystal clear with this one. Don't just skip over the design and SEO steps and jump right into ad spending. That's the fastest way to waste a ton of money. And I don't want you to do that, friends. You need to be optimized first which means you must follow all of those foundational steps first with your product selection, your pricing strategy, your design and attracting the ideal buyer with a niche and optimized keywords. All of that, you need to have a strong foundation in your shop first before you start adding on Etsy ads. And then I want you to have the right mindset because this is the part where I tell you that marketing and ads are a business investment. That means you are spending money to make money. Now, they are not required, but they are a tool for strategic growth, especially if you are looking for faster growth in the beginning and you've done your homework so that your shop is optimized and ready to do this. With all of that in mind, let's dive in. My ad strategy has a very basic principle. More views equals more data. Data is everything in this world. More data equals better decisions. The more data you have, the better decisions you can make with that data. 
So for me, this means that I turn on ads and I set them to $30 a day in the beginning. Now, when you are just starting out, you are not spending $30 a day. That's just a capped budget. You'll probably only spend maybe a dollar or two for the first couple of weeks, and then it will slowly start to build as your listings start to rank and get picked up in the Etsy algorithm. And I do this for the very specific purpose of getting more views on my listings because those views get my listings in front of more customers and give my listings more of a chance to start getting sales faster. Then after 30 to 45-ish days, depending on how things are going, I reevaluate my budget and listings based on the data that's coming in and I start narrowing it down. So I watch my ad stats and I turn listings off when they're not making a return or selling right away. And Etsy has a very helpful way for us to see that information. When we head into our shop in Etsy under marketing, we get our Etsy ads performance information. So this is where all of your Etsy ads data will live. And you can see that I've had 31 orders so far in this shop coming specifically from ads. Remember, those are orders that I may not have had if I didn't have ads turned on. And what I like to look at is this managing advertised listings, because when I come in here, this is where I get to see return on ad spend or ROAS. This is a marketing term and analysis that gives us an idea of how well our ads are performing as it relates to revenue that we make from those ads. The higher the number, the better but any sort of return is going to be good, especially in the beginning as a new shop. This is also where I determine over a period of time when and if I want to turn off advertising for a listing that may just not be performing. And perhaps it's also a clue that I might need to make changes to either the design or the mock-up or my keyword strategy. When I click into a listing, this is where I can start to see how each individual listing is performing, especially if it's got orders and clicks and views coming in. This is also where I can start to see how customers were led to this ad. And this is where you can find a gold mine of data of keywords because you'll be able to see which keywords are performing the best. It tells you exactly which terms the buyer searched for that then led them to this listing. It shows you the views and then whether or not they clicked or purchased the listing after getting to it from that keyword. You can also turn off relevant keywords. So sometimes your listing might appear in a search that's really not that relevant and you can actually turn that off. That way Etsy knows in the future not to show your listing for those particular keywords. I've got an example here for yellow sweatshirt for women. That's great, but that's probably not going to be my specific target audience and ideal buyer. So I can turn that off so that I don't have to worry about potential ad views and clicks that will cost me money in my ad budget for customers that probably aren't going to be my ideal buyer. So this data here is really the place to be able to track your ads and hone in on what is performing well. The other thing that I want to draw your attention to is the fact that there were 31 orders in this new shop from ad spend. And when you compare that to my total number of actual orders that I've had for this shop, that's 46 orders. So that means if 31 out of 46 total orders came from ads, that means that almost 70% of my new shop's first orders came from having ads turned on and using that as a strategy. And that is why I use this particular strategy because again, my goal with this was to demonstrate growing fast. And in order to do that, you need to fast track your shop 
in that Etsy ranking. And here's why this works. Again, the simple principle of more views equals more data. More data equals better decisions. And better decisions means that you can hone in on what your ideal buyer is looking for, which means you can improve your designs, improve your keywords, and even your mockups to improve your sales conversion based on this data. Essentially, you're trying to recreate and do more of what's working and then boost and promote those things that are working at the same time because this is where it comes full circle. More sales equals more reviews. And assuming those are positive reviews, right? Sales equal reviews. And if you remember back to our original Etsy ranking concept and how you start to appear higher in the organic ranking or Etsy algorithm is by sales and reviews because that's part of the customer and market experience. So it all ties together to result in faster growth by getting more views, which can return into getting more sales, getting more reviews, and boosting your organic ranking. Because climbing in that Etsy ranking is the fastest way to start seeing consistent sales. And the only way to climb faster in those rankings is to start forcing the needle to move faster in that direction. It becomes a growth cycle. So there you have it, friends, my secret sauce to Etsy ads and how I strategically utilize them to drive more views to my listings that have been optimized and stand the best chance for conversion to turn into sales, which then translate into positive reviews and ultimately climbing that Etsy ranking algorithm faster to achieve more consistent sales because as those sales go through, those listings renew and again, it becomes that growth cycle and is a fast way to scale. And again, to make sure you're absolutely hearing me on this, you have to make sure your shop is optimized first or you're simply launching money out the window with very little chance of a return in sales. Don't do it that way. Make sure you're making smart business decisions and data-driven decisions and optimizing your shop. And just because this is the last module, don't think I forgot about homework. So here's your final homework assignment. Take action. I want you to consider using at least one Etsy marketing option. At a minimum, turn on those automated sales coupons that Etsy can send out for you. You don't have to think about it, particularly for abandoned and favorited items. It's a great way to attract those customers that are clearly already interested in your listings to help incentivize them to close that sale. And then start building on the rest when you get more comfortable. And of course, commit to following the steps in all of the modules do the homework. If you skipped out on that, go back and rewatch and do the homework right along with it because I promise you it will help you on your journey. It will help you scale faster and it will help you optimize and make decisions that will give your shop the best chance of success. And finally, remember, focus on mastering those foundational concepts first getting your product right, getting your pricing strategy right, establishing a strategy for SEO and making sure that you are optimizing your shop and your listings and attracting your ideal buyer in your niche. And then using all of that to create designs for your ideal buyer and then build on that with those integrated supports of being consistent and adding value to your shop and driving traffic. And that is it, folks. Cue the confetti and sound the alarm because you have made it to the end of this course on mastering Etsy print on demand. I hope that this has further sparked your motivation to start or continue your Etsy print on demand journey. And if you're looking for more helpful ways to continue the work and stay connected, 
I invite you to join me over on Patreon, where I provide a membership to get exclusive access to my Google Drive with all sorts of wonderful tools and resources that I've created and continue adding to every month. It's also a place to join conversations as I think about future content and how I can serve you with the most amount of value. I also hope that you'll smash that subscribe button and like all of the videos in this free course if you haven't already so that you don't miss out on all of the exciting upcoming content that I've got planned for this channel. And finally, I invite you to check out my brand new website where you can subscribe to my own email list, follow along on new blog content that I will be building, and access other freebies that I have available on there to support you on your journey. Thank you so much for being here. And until next time, stay consistent and keep going. I am cheering you on, my friend.